All right, hello. It's time for another lunchbox, excuse me, lunchbox soapbox, uh, which is an opportunity for me to use my lunch break to share with you what I believe to be a true, but arguably unpopular sports opinion. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about former Major League Baseball MVP, World Series winner, and the first man to ever do the 40-40. 40 home runs and 40 stolen braces. That, of course, being none other than Jose Canseco. Canseco has been an enigmatic figure throughout his entire career, um, but I believe him to be a fascinating uh, person, a fascinating individual, and a man who has a story that is mythic, if not Herculean in nature. And that's what I'm going to talk about. But before I even get that, as just a prelude, I would share to, or care to argue that Conseco is essentially the shoeless Joe Jackson of my generation. Um, you know, I grew up watching baseball in the 80s and 90s. This unfortunately has been come to known as the steroid era. Um, and that is an era that's most directly linked to Conseco specifically and what we'll be talking about today. Uh, but Jackson is a different story. Shoeless Joe Jackson, um, for those who don't know that story, probably most do at this point. You know, he was uh, affiliated with the other largest stain on the history of the sport, which was the, the gambling of the World Series. I think it was in 19... 18, somewhere around there. I don't know the exact date, so forgive me. Um, but Jackson uh, was uh, directly connected to that that White Sox team, and um, it, you know it was a situation where it put a stain on the sport, and he ended up being banned from baseball as a result of it. Um, he was largely maligned and hated, like all the players affiliated. Uh, he was arguably the most talented, the most gifted, the youngest, had the most to lose, uh, and unfortunately never got to see his career uh, blossom in the way that it could have had he not been affiliated. Uh, now, one of the things that restored Jackson to sort of fame and acceptance was actually uh, the novelization of his story that came about through Ray Kinsella's popular book known as Shoeless Joe Jackson, which was eventually made into a movie starring Kevin Costner called The Field of Dreams, which probably many people have seen. Uh, and that in some ways uh, kind of restored uh, Jackson's legacy and his popularity uh, to baseball fans. But it did take a good 60 years before people were willing to accept that. So the same may be true of Conseco. Um, but like um, uh, Jackson, Conseco is most directly and in, um, immediately involved in the controversy of his era being the PEDs or performance enhancement drug usage. Uh, he is the essentially main person, really the only person who comes out being the whistleblower, um, who does come forward and tell the truth. He, like Jackson, does confront the commissioner of baseball. Uh, Jackson did it in a letter. I believe Conseco did it in person. Uh, and both of them end up in a court of law where they're actually forced to um, swear under oath and they end up being the only two people who are fully honest about what was going on. Uh, and it actually ends up being their honesty that results in their ultimate punishment. Uh, so already you have a fascinating story um, and, and, and many correlations. But the thing about Conseco to me is is why I've become such a fascinat fascinated with his story. Actually has nothing to do with sports, but my love of literature um, because I'm a huge fan of myth, um, as any as any literature major is, because that's the foundation of all literature, uh, and even much of philosophy, which is another thing that I have a background in. Uh, and, and I think myths are powerful, and they're great stories. And if you know anything about myths, whether the the you know the Homer myths, the tales of you know Achilles and Odysseus, or you know the, the Roman myths, people like Aeneas, all the way up through you know you have all the Christian story myths with people like Samson and all these different stories. They all tend to follow certain patterns that that look at human development, and human history. And the way that those things manifest, and there's certain characteristics that tend to be true of these stories, certain what uh, you know Carl Jung would call archetypes, right, that we see in these narratives. So you have everything from like the story of the sage, right, who is or the young knight who has to you know branch out and go out on his own and sort of slay the dragon and prove himself and come back and and become a hero. Um, you have the the rise to power, the rise to kingdom, um, ruling over people. But then you also have the fall of kings, right, in this sort of narrative of the fall uh, when power becomes corrupted. Uh, by power itself. Um, you also always have stories of villains, um, uh, the people who sort of are the, the people who are the, the uh, antagonists of these problems. But then you also have stories of redemption, where many of these villains uh, sort of become redeemed. And those are also great stories we love. And then lastly, of course, you sort of have the story of the gesture uh, or the joker, the clown, the sort of humorous character who just
just happens to be in the wrong places at the wrong time, or maybe is flawed, but his flaws are actually his strengths, and so on and so forth. Uh, and there's also other tropes. You know, oftentimes these people are orphans. They come from foreign lands. Sometimes they're, they're twins, right? They have a, another counterpart. Um, you think of like Romulus and Remus or Cain and Abel. Um, they oftentimes are flawed, and the flaw is also their strength. Um, they oftentimes are characters of humility, or maybe they're just characters of too much uh, uh, bravado. All of this in, ends up creating myth, right? And the mythic stories that we love. In the sake of uh, Conseco, what's so fascinating about him is he's one of the few individuals that essentially has has lived a life where he's played out all of these characters um, before our own eyes. Uh, you know, when he came into the league as a young star, a very young athlete, he set a tone that was un unprecedented, right? I mean, he wins Rookie of the Year in, in 86. He uh, says in 87, going into the 88 season, he's going to hit a 40-40, which no one's ever done before. So talk about calling your shot. You know, we, we can think of the Bay Bruce story about hitting a home run. He's calling an entire season of what he's going to do. And then shockingly, he went out and did something like that. He did the 44. And again, no one had ever done that before. That's 88. He ends MVP of the year. He goes to three World Series, wins a World Series title, uh, and all in just the first couple seasons of his career. He's literally the, the, the page that's gone out and accomplished the task that no one thought possible. He slayed the dragon in a Herculean way. He sort of, uh, you know, he's uh, fought off the, what is it, Hercules' is 12 stages. He's, he's done all these things that you have to do to be successful at a very early age. And yet, then like anything else, um, he, because of his honesty, where he starts to basically share with his teammates and his coaches and his trainers how he's having such success, which is through the use of um, illegal substances or, or things that are illegal if they're obtained illegally, which is performance enhancing and drugs, which, by the way, the MLB had no rules against at the time. This is how he's finding his success. This is his, his weapon, if you will. This is his, you know, his sword. You know, you think of the story of King Arthur who pulls the sword from the stone and that gives him power. Or you think of someone like Hercules who was half God and he gets his powers partially from Zeus. He finds these performance enhancing and drugs and rather than uh, keeping it to himself, he decides to share it with others. So as a result of him sharing this with other teammates, they also start to use performance enhancing drugs. And then it sort of spreads like wildfire fire. Uh, and the error that, must, uh, well, one of the many errors that Canseco makes is rather than keeping this hush-hush is that he is honest about it and he shares it with people. And then he becomes a liability because uh, like anything, when something's made public, even to a handful of people, eventually word gets out and rumor starts to spread fairly early in, in Canseco's career that he is in fact using performance enhancing drugs, which was a problem that previously had never really been present in the sport of baseball. Now the MLB has a problem on their hands and that is they've got a sort of rogue player who's become problematic. And so they try to make an example of him in a lot of ways, whether it be trading him around, trying to control his productivity, trying to control his salary, basically blackballing him without officially blackballing him. And that ends up being the next kind of five years of his career where Kaseko kind of bounces around and never really finds a home. Uh, you know, he plays okay. He also suffers some injury, but he kind of gets cast as this sort of buffoon character, um, a little bit like this, the, the, um, the jester, the clown. Uh, you start to see a lot of stories come up in the news of him doing random things, you know, uh, issues with his girlfriends and, you know, all these types of things that kind of cast him in a new light and change the perception, change the image of him to eventually the point where as the steroid era reaches its full fruition, he ends up being cast as the villain, right? He is the, he is the criminal. He's the person who is sort of, uh, person number one in terms of the problem of the steroid. And he gets sort of labeled that. And therefore he becomes the, the key target for the Emily. MLB Major League Baseball and eventually get eventually gets fully blackballed and can't get even a contract uh, to play at all and is forced to retire. Uh, now, mind you, he does get 15 seasons, which is not a bad career. But when you look at his season in 1998, uh, where he actually was up to win the 40-40 again, we see that Canseco was still performing well. Um, and even in that year, he claims he didn't get the 40-40 because the coaching staff and management from the Blue Jays actually told him to stop stealing bases. Um, he did not know why, but then when it came to renegotiating their contracts, they essentially told him that he wasn't going to get any other offers, and they gave him a low-ball contract to even let him play. So Canseco starts to learn he's being blackballed, and then eventually he's fully blackballed, which is when he becomes goes public with what's going on um, and had trouble understanding why because to his defense, everyone else was doing the same thing. But just because of his initial affiliation with it and the fact that he was the primary person bringing this stuff into the league, he's the person who gets cast out. Uh, but 
Then, with the publication of his book and the court trials and things, he becomes this whistleblowing figure, uh, and he's the person who sort of brings this to public attention, and he ends up being the only guy from this entire generation who's open and honest about what's actually going on, and there's this sort of tale of redemption. Um, so he, he it is a very mythic story in all its phases. He kind of experiences those things, and he is a Herculean character. If you if you know the story of Hercules, he's sort of this sort of flawed um, strong man who he, he has these strengths and this ability, but he overly trusts people. He overly trusts women. It gets him in trouble. He has a certain allegiance to his mother, which we see with Canseco as well. That's what inspires him to start using the uh, PEDs. Uh, he wants to be the greatest athlete uh, in the world in order to honor his dead mother. Um, and then he the, becomes this flawed hero, um, and his flaws and his strengths kind of coincide and lead to both his successes, and that is conquering all these feats, like in the case of Canseco, winning World Series, and breaking records, but also leads to his demise, which is um, getting blackballed from baseball. And then, of course, in the case of Hercules, it ends up leads, leading to his death. So, fascinating character, the shoeless Joe Jackson of my generation, um, and also a figure of, of mythic nature in the truest sports sense, um, and even in the truest mythic sense. He's a Herculean character and someone I find fascinating. And I feel like Hopefully, you know, some years down the road, maybe there'll be a rebranding of him, um, whether it be through through film or television or maybe a book or series or something where we get a, a different portrayal of a complicated and interesting figure. Have a great day. Sorry, real quick epilogue. Canseco is also a twin. He had a twin brother, and he uh, was born in Havana, Cuba, and he came to the United States to find a better life. He fled. His family had to flee uh, from Castro. So you even have the, 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 the foreigner who has to leave his foreign land. You even have the twin narrative. It's just uh, a little bit too much to believe if it weren't real, um, but it is fascinating. So I just wanted to add in those other little caveats uh, that I forgot to mention in the other uh, part of the video.